Hi everybody, this is Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews. Today I'm going to be doing a tier listing of all of the fantasy series that I have personally read. Um, there's actually going to be a few sci-fi series in here as well, but it's predominantly fantasy. And, you know, the way that I'm defining a series is that, you know, there's a lot of fantasy series that have jumps in time or it's kind of split up into multiple parts. But I'm considering it one series if a lot of the characters are the same. Um, but if it's in the same world, but all of the characters are entirely new, I'm going to call that a new series and give it a new ranking. Um, I haven't necessarily read all of the books in each of these series, namely the ones that are lower tier. I just gave up on them at a certain point. Um, but yeah, it's in general, I've read most of, if not all the books in all these series. So we'll start on our first one. Um, this is going to be the Powder Mage. And I'm giving this an A tier listing. I had almost no expectations of this book. Um, it got recommended to me by a friend. I really didn't know what to expect. And I was really blown away by how good this book was. The world building in particular was S tier for me. The magic system I thought was a little bit weaker. Um, it's you know what you call like a flintlock fantasy where it deals with like you know, old school rifles, um, but there's a nice, there's a cool little magic system in it, but it's not really about that. The plot in this is, is, is really, really well done. I probably would have this as S tier, but there were two series in the Powder Mage. You had the original series, and then you had the follow-up, and the follow-up had many of the same characters on a different continent, and I thought the follow-up one was pretty weak. Um, you know, I would probably have that follow-up in the C category, and it was more like a whodunit instead of the first book, just that classic epic style fantasy that covers multiple POVs in a really sprawling sense and dealt with really huge, huge issues. Um, for some reason, the next one kind of fell flat for me, and that's why this one's moving down to an A tier. Um, the next one on our list is going to be um, Cradle, and Cradle's an easy S tier for me. Uh, I love this series. It is, I understand why they, um, a lot of people call it crackle, because uh, it is like a drug. These books are short. They're, they're hot and fast. It's almost like a video game in book form. You know, you have characters literally like leveling up, uh, learning new powers every book. Every book, it's obvious that they're going to be in a greater place than the one before, uh, but it works. It's very well done. You get this sense of a huger-than-life story from the first book. You, you see this character who is tiny. You know, they're level one. But you get a sense of what they're going to turn into over time. So it's really fun knowing where this main character is going to end up by the end of the books. Uh, very clearly where they're going to end up. And that slow progression book by book. This is uh, what you call a progression fantasy book. It's the only one that I've ever read, but... I, I think the progression fantasy is something I'm really into, and I look forward to reading a couple more in that genre uh, later on this year. Um, moving on, I have the Bloodsworn Saga, and this is going to be an A tier for me. Uh, this is only two books long, Shadow of the Gods and Hunger of the Gods, which comes out in, I think, a week or two, but I got an early release of it and loved it. I gave both of these books five out of fives. I really don't really have any criticisms. I love this book. I love John Gwen. Uh, the only criticism is, you know, it's, it's going to be uh, very difficult, if not impossible, for me to give a two-book series in S tier. Um, this book is going to be longer. I think it's going to end up being three or four books. Uh, if the end of the series is as good as the first couple, this is going to be an easy S tier. Um, it follows this Norse um, kind of like Viking-style fantasy book. And it is just amazing. I highly recommend it to everybody. This is a great new series uh, to get into uh, that's not finished yet. So if you haven't given it a shot, I, I really encourage you to read um, the, the Bloodsworn Saga. Um, next book on here is uh, the first in the sci-fi category. And this is going to be the Silo series by Hugh Howey. Um, you know, each of these books move down a category. You know, I, I think this is going to be a C tier for me. The first book was probably A tier, um, and then they kind of moved down as the books went along. Uh, the first book was really well done. I was engrossed by it, um, especially the first half of the book. 
I, I still think that the the intro chapters to uh, to Wool, which is the first book in the series, are some of the best first chapters of any book that I've ever read. Um, I knew nothing about this book. I stayed at my brother's house um, for like a weekend uh, on a vacation. He lives uh, in a different state than me. And uh, he gave me this book and I devoured it in every free second I had while I was there and finished up the book in like a couple days. Uh, extremely well done. You know, the, the next couple in the series definitely drop quality, but uh, at the very least, I think you should give Wool a shot if you're at all into sci-fi. It's got this amazing plot that I'm surprised other people haven't done, whereas you have these people who live in an underground silo where they, you know, there's been nuclear war, so they can't come out, but they don't really know what the world is like. And there's a ton of twists and turns that are really well done. Um, and, and I do like this book a lot, even though I, I drop it down to a C tier. Um, this next one is going to be Mistborn Era 2. And you'll see that I thought the Mistborn Era 1 was a significantly better book, um, book series. But I'm moving this down in the D category. I am, I'm a huge Sanderson fan. Uh, you know, I, I'm one of those, I will devour every one of his books. This is the only series that I that I don't enjoy of his. I don't know what it is other than to, to think that, you know, I think that Sanderson excels on large books and longer book series. This is a, a short book. Um, all of these are, are, are rather small. I bet you the first three books combined of this are probably a little bit longer than one of the Stormlight Chronicles books. Um, it, I just... I, I can't appreciate what he's doing here. It's got this Western feel to it. The twists aren't quite there. It's trying to be funny, but it's not. Um, it's it's kind of trying to be some like Discworld style humor, and I just can't laugh at it. Um, and so everything that it's trying to be, I, I can't appreciate it. I, I'm, I struggle to figure out why a lot of people say that they enjoy this era too more than the, the original Mistborn trilogy. I really like the original Mistborn trilogy. We'll see it here later on the list, but it's a way higher grade. Um, yeah, I I hope that you know this series finishes out and we can move on to Era Three. And I'm hoping Era Three is a lot like Era One. Um, uh, the next book on this category is Realm of the Elderlings. This is going to be an S tier for me. Uh, I love Robin Hobb and the Realm of the Elderlings. I am not all the way through it. I'm on the fourth of five of the mini trilogies that are inside of it. Although the one I'm reading right now, the uh, the Dragon or the the Rainwild Chronicles, I think it's four books, and I really don't like the Rainwild Chronicles. I'll, I'll just say that right now. But the other ones are all S tier, and you know to have an outlier I think is okay to still stay up here. It's not like the top of the S tier for me. It's probably on the bottom side. But Realm of the Elderlings is so well done. The uh, the plot's a little slow, the magic is weak, but the characters are the best of any book I've ever read. They're so believable. They're you feel for these characters. They go through a lot of trauma. They they get back up. They keep on fighting. You really sympathize with these characters. The the dialogue is amazing. Um, so for that alone. You know, Robin Hobb has done something amazing here, and I'll continue to read all of her books with gusto. Um, next up, we have The Black Company. Um, Black Company is going to be a C tier for me. I really wanted to like this series more. I, I did enjoy it. I don't love it. Uh, the first book was my favorite in the series. They didn't consistently go down. I think it had a lot of like ups and downs. There's a decent amount of number number books in this series. I think like six or seven, um, maybe even a little bit more. But, you know, I, I love the idea of the Black Company. It's got this kind of like Vietnam War style diary, um, it, but in this old school, you know, dark fantasy world where the, these guys aren't heroes. They're like a mercenary company that does very bad things. And they work for like the Wicked Witch of the West style person. And, you know, I love the how fresh that is i i'm uh, malazan which you'll see later on in this list is a is a series that i adore and it's very clear that they borrowed a lot of the concepts from the black company to write malazan um, especially the uh the military dialogue and how they get along with each other it's it's ripped off straight from black company 
So I did enjoy that out of Black Company. The plot gets a little convoluted um, as you go along, and it gets a little stale. But you know, I, I definitely encourage people to read that first book at the very least, and uh, keep on going if you enjoy it. I did enjoy finishing it. You know, anything in the C tier or above, uh, I enjoyed uh, at least a little bit. So. Uh, yeah, C tier for me. Uh, next one, we have Discworld. Uh, I'm putting Discworld in the C category, but probably the top of it. Um, mostly because it's very hit or miss. I have S tier in here. I have D tier in here in Discworld. Um, you know, some of the series consistently are D tier. Some of them are consistently A and S tier. So it's too all over the place for me to put too high up. Um, you know, and I want to space these out a little bit. I could probably put a lot of these all up a tier. Uh, but, I, you know, I want to give a decent proportion in each of them. Discworld is so funny. The, the, the funny, the, the books that are funny are the funniest books I've ever read. Uh, and it's got these plot threads that are surprisingly complex and kind of higher level fantasy thinking that go down these fun concepts. Um, and there's so many of the books. There's got to be like 40 plus books. They're short reads. Uh, you know, I, I do encourage everybody to read them, um, especially the... Uh, the night watch series i think that's what it's called or the city watch series uh it's the best of the series um but there's a lot of good books in there and uh you know i, I definitely enjoy my time in the disc world um moving on we have dresden files this is an easy d tier for me i do not like dresden files i read way too many of these books i think i read 10 of them i, I read 10 of them because i i have friends that tell me that the end of the books starts to get amazing but i just can't ride this journey anymore it, it's it's too much of the same thing i don't like harry dresden the main character and all of it is from his point of view so you can see why i wouldn't love this book he's way too sexist for me it, it makes me eye roll you know i'm not one of those like crusaders who's going to be really upset whenever any time of sexism is uh is brought up but it's too much and from the beginning of book one, you see it and you just, it makes you kind of detest this character. I don't, I can't get along with the humor of it. It's got this really dry, sarcastic style humor that, you know, sarcasm is not my brand of humor. I wish some of the books I thought were good. Uh, you know, a few of the books I would put in the B tier, but a lot of them are in the D tier. And yeah, I just can't ride this anymore. Um, Next up, we've got The Expanse, and I'm moving this in D tier, uh, probably over here on the D side. I'm not the biggest sci-fi fan, to be honest with you, so I'm a little bit biased. Um, but the story, I thought the original book, um, Leviathan Wakes, was probably A or B, but they each went down from there. I, I think I read three or four of the books. And eventually just gave it up because it wasn't moving in a direction that I wanted to see it. Uh, the plot didn't feel, you know, it, it felt like it had these threads of interesting concepts to them. But then they'd go in these directions that I really just didn't appreciate. I, I didn't love the characters. Um, you know, I, I, I know this is like a space opera and I wanted this bigger than life story. But what happened was each of these books, at least the ones that I read kind of went down these lines that were more micro in what they were focusing on and ignoring the larger world. Like I wanted, you know, worlds ending, enormous battleships and huge epic style fights. And what I got was not that. Maybe it turns into it later on, but um, the writing wasn't strong enough for me to want to kind of push through it. So I, I gave up on it about probably about four books in. Um, next we have the faithful and the fallen. I'm actually not done with this series, but even without being done, I'm moving this up to the A tier, you know, probably over here. I love this book. Uh, it, I, I've read three out of four. They're absolute top tier five out of fives for me. I don't have a single negative thing to say about the faithful and the fallen. Every John Gwen book I've ever read is a five out of five. He might end up being my favorite author as I read more of his books. You know, it's again, all of his books are this Norse style, but this series in particular has this kind of epic 
a Song of Ice and Fire style world where it's a, a very complex world and very rich. It's not like a, nice, a Song of Ice and Fire, but I think people who like that series w- will also love this series. Um, but, it, you know, it's got these mythical beasts in it, which I love, you know, giants and, you know, powerful weapons and, you know, angels and demons. And it's got the, um, the chosen one trope that ends up kind of getting flipped on its head. It's got one of the best twists um, in the third book that I've ever read in any fantasy book. I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but it's just incredible. Flips the whole series on its head. Um, cannot get enough of this series, and I can't wait to read the last book in the series, which I hear is even better than the other ones. Um, yeah, I can't wait. And I, I have that... I, I borrow all my books from the library, so I'm a couple of weeks out from getting that book. And uh, yeah, can't wait. To, cannot wait to read it. Um, Lord of the Rings is next. I'm moving this into the B tier. I know a lot of people, pretty much every booktuber that follows fantasy will have this in the S tier. I'm just not there. I Maybe it's because I didn't end up reading this book until later on after I read a lot of these other books. I didn't read it as a kid. I know I read The Hobbit. I might have read uh, Fellowship of the Ring when I was younger in high school, but didn't end up reading the other two. And I, I did enjoy it. I think that I can appreciate the historical importance of it, where every other book on this list probably wouldn't exist without this series. But if I graded this book, I like to grade books as if they came out today. And if Lord of the Rings came out today, it would be a B for me. The story's good, not great. The writing is good, not great. Um, I do love books that are almost a history book. Um, and that is this to the upteenth degree, almost too much. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's okay to good throughout each of the books. I gave a decent, like, four out of five score, just not in love with it. And uh, I wish I liked it more. I wish I was on the same page as everybody else, but not a book I'm going to reread. Um, but I, I can't appreciate it for the, you know, the history that it, that it brings. Um, next up, we've got The First Law. This is an S tier. I love the first law so much. Joe Abercrombie is a master. Um, you know, he writes these dark fantasy books that have that epic world that is taking, you know, handling these enormous affairs. The writing is amazing. The characters are so well done. You know, you, you hate these characters, which I love. I love to hate read people. Um, very few redeemable characters in it, but the ones that are are even more entertaining to read than the ones you hate. Um, Glockta is maybe my favorite fantasy character of all time. Um, you know, I, I liked the standalone books a lot. I loved the first trilogy, and the second trilogy were all five out of fives for me. It's one of the few book series that I've given all five out of, five out of fives to. Um, that Age of Madness last trilogy is absolutely incredible and um i can't say enough good things about joe abercrombie i can't wait to read his next book i'm sad that the first law is done he's writing another series i think called the devils and uh you know just reading about what it's the the basic concept of it knowing it's by joe abercrombie i'm gonna gobble that up the second i get my hands on it um we're back to science fiction and my bias against science fiction i guess but this is going to the Probably the bottom of the D tier. Uh, you know, similarly to a lesser degree to Lord of the Rings, I can appreciate what Asimov was doing here, um, and that he, you know, was one of those you know founding fathers of the science fiction category. But I did not enjoy a Foundation. It was way too all over the place. You know, it's the series that takes place over hundreds, if not thousands, of years. The books jump around. The characters jump around. The plot was never super engaging to me. Um, You know, not a fan of a foundation by any stretch of the imagination. I did read several of the robot books that I liked a lot more than this. Um, You know, I I don't... There was a long time ago, so I'm not going to put them on this list because I don't... I wouldn't know exactly where to score them. But, you know, I definitely have those above the D tier. But, yeah, foundation is not one of my favorites. Um... Then we have Gentlemen Bastards. This is going to be a B tier for me. Um, 
the first book in the Gentleman Bastards was a top tier S book for me. I I adore that book. I can't wait to forget about it a little bit so I can read it again and appreciate it as much as I did the first time. The next book in the series was probably a B. The third book in the series was probably like a C or a D. Um, they continually went down in quality, which is very unfortunate. You know, I am really looking forward eventually when the Thorn of Emberlane, the fourth book in the series, comes out. Um, I know it's been a really long time. You know, he, uh, Scott Lynch is kind of up there with uh, Patrick Rothfuss and George R. R. Martin for writers that, you know, you're never sure if they're going to come out with their next book. But, you know, I... You know, I'm, I'm a patient reader. There's plenty of books for me to read in between. I'm not going to get all mad at these guys for not writing their books. Um, so I, I do have faith that eventually Scott Lynch is going to come out with this next book. I, I will. I have a, a lot of faith from that first book into that he can bounce back and get into form and write a book that I'm going to love again. Because, you know, I love the main two characters. It's probably my, my favorite, you know, buddy fantasy book between two best friends um, that there is. Uh, you know, Locke and Jean, Jean are lovable characters. They're these like rapscallion scoundrels that are hysterical thieves. Um, and uh, but yeah, I, I I recommend the the original Gentleman Bastards book to pretty much everybody I meet uh, because it, it's just uh, it speaks to me in a lot of positive ways. Next we have a song of ice and fire. Um, a Song of Ice and Fire is going to be, let's see, we'll probably move this to the to the bottom of the A tier. Uh, this is m one of my first loves of a book. I, you know, one of my first fantasy series that I got through, it would have been the top of the S tier for me until I found out there were a lot of other books that I liked more. But, you know, I do love the world building in it. I dislike that the last couple of books in the series have, you know, continually dropped in quality. Um, you know, that last book, I did not enjoy it very much, unfortunately. Um, A Dance with Dragons, too all over the place. The plot is getting way too spread out. You know, I like a tighter book. You know, I feel like the first law is all of the good things from A Song of Ice and Fire that rises in quality as the books go along, whereas A Song of Ice and Fire isn't well planned out. You know, I know this is talked about so much, but it's just very clear George R. R. Martin has no idea where he's going with the story. He has a start point, he has an end point, but he's not sure how to connect the dots. And it's very clear that these stories are getting too divergent and the, the plot threads are getting too unbelievable, um, unfortunately. Because, But I, I can't wait for the next book to come out, uh, A Winds of Winter. I will read it immediately. And... Cross my fingers that it is uh, goes against my thoughts about what it's going to be, which is a bad book. So, but I will give it a shot. Um, Malazin, my favorite book series of all time. I I can't say enough positive things about Malazin. I could talk for an hour about all of the things that I love about the series. I, I won't do that. I, I don't want to bore you. Um, but it is dark. It is real. It is the most epic of stories. It's funny. It is um, the biggest world, I think, out of any fantasy book series. It covers, you know, probably 10 plus continents that all feel different and alive. Um, the story that Erickson put together is perfect. It covers 10 books, and it's so clear that, it, like, as opposed to George R. R. Martin, he outlined all of these books before he wrote them because they all, every one of those books is an easy five out of five for me, especially on a reread, which I haven't done yet. But I know, you know, I, I, I rated the first book a four out of five, and I know that when I read it again, it'll be a five uh, because it sets up so much. You read that first book, and you're just confused. But by the end of the series, if you went back and re read it, you'd be like, man, I, there's so much going on here that I, I couldn't appreciate the first time around. Um, the last book in the series is the greatest book I've ever read. Um, just if you if you haven't re read Malazan, take the plunge, accept that you're not going to understand everything, accept that you're going to be confused, 
and also accept that you will be rewarded as you go along in this book series. I encourage everybody to read, commit to reading the first three books. If you don't like the series by the end of Memories of Ice, you're not going to like this book series. Um, but if you do, like me, you could find your favorite series of all time. So Mistborn Era 1. Um, I'm throwing this at the top of the B tier. This series goes down for me over time. I did have this up probably in the S tier a couple years ago. Um, it, you know, the story feels a little basic to me. It's the world building is not amazing to me. The magic system's great. Uh, the twists are great, but the world feels dull and the writing is a little dull. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough about the twists that are in this book. They're probably the best twists I've ever read in a fantasy series. Uh, you know, my favorite type of twists are those that are fair but they twist everything that you know about the story on its head. And that's what Mistborn Era 1 did. It, I, I really can't wait to go back and read it um, with a different appreciation for what you're reading. I don't want to ruin anything, but you know, it does this amazing job at having an unre unreliable narrator. Um, and when the twist hits you, it's like, oh man, I should have seen this coming. But you didn't. There's no way you did. Uh, if you did, you're lying, but it's fair, and I, I can't say enough positive things about that. I just wish the world felt richer to me, and I wish the writing was a little bit higher quality. Um, and clearly, Brandon Sanderson improved as a writer as we went along because he's an amazing writer. Um, it just didn't all totally expose itself in this book. Um, next up, I'm going to skip a couple here. I'm going to do the first Raira books. Um, and I'm probably going to throw these in the C tier, um, maybe like right in the middle of it. Um, this is going to be Raira uh, Revelations and Raira um, Chronicle, maybe? I, yeah, the Raira Chronicles. Um, you know, Raira Revelations um, comes after Raira Chronicle, and it tells the prequel story about these two story, these two characters. It's a it's a buddy book. You know, these two best friends that are likable. The plot is a little dull that, you know, you know, I, I, there are a lot of uh, people that I, I hear from that have this book rated way higher. Uh, I did enjoy it. I disliked it increasingly as I went along in the series. The first book was an A it kind of all went downhill from there. Um, mostly because they're all kind of the same to me. They follow the same structure there you can kind of figure out what's going to go on before it happens. Um, you know, and maybe a more enjoyable way to read this book is to really break it up and, uh, you know, read a book, take some time off, put a month in between your next time you read the next book. You might, you might get some more enjoyment out of this book. Unfortunately, I powered through these and it just got too stale for me, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to follow this up by Legends of the First Empire. This is the way, 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 way prequel to the Rayer books. None of the characters are the same. It tells a story from thousands i think of years before it it's a bad book series to me it's d i hate to say it the first book in the series was probably an s i loved it and then it just got straight to the d tier for you know like four books in a row i just didn't like them at all it got they got so stale to me i rolled my eyes so much during the book series and the relationships these characters were in were bad um you know, it's got this one character that invents modern day things in a super fast sequence. And it, you're supposed to be like wowed and impressed by this character. And it's just cringy. Um, I didn't like the, the antagonists. I didn't like the protagonists. I'm sad. I thought the first book had a lot of promise. Uh, and it, it really went downhill. Um, next up, we are going to do the name of the wind. And for some reason, I'm forgetting the series name of this, but this is Patrick Rothfuss, uh, series. I'm putting this one in the B tier. Uh, I really like these books, but there's only two of them. And the second one is not as good as the first one. The first is probably an S. The second one is probably a 
B or a C. Um, you know, there's not enough of them to compete and move it too much higher on the list. The first one, uh, Name of the Wind, uh, King Killer, King Killer Chronicles, the name I, w- I was forgetting. And, uh, that first book does everything I want out of a fantasy book. It's got a lot of tropes that I enjoy. Um, the idea of like a fantasy school, I always love it. Um, you know, kind of the, a super powered, better than everybody kind of character. I like that kind of character. Uh, the writing quality of this book was maybe the best out of any book in the series. You know, the way that Patrick Rothfuss explains things are is amazing. I love the way he writes. Um, the second book started to get a little bit all over the place. I don't have a ton of faith in the third book. I think that he's got a little bit of that George R. R. Martin syndrome where he doesn't really know where... He knows the ending. He doesn't know how to get there. And I worry... There's only one more book, and there's so much to happen in between the end of the second book and the end of the third book that I don't know how he's going to accomplish this. I hope he proves me wrong desperately, um, but don't have a ton of faith for it. Um, Red Rising, moving this to the D category. My bias, I guess, against sci-fi is very evident here. I wanted to like this book so much, but I just didn't. I, you know, the first book had this hybrid story of like hunger games and um i don't know like a military world takeover kind of style book um i I just couldn't connect with it you know the writing was this very like matter of fact jumping from event to event tried to be too fast paced I couldn't sympathize with these characters, couldn't sympathize with the main character. I thought it started out with a super interesting concept and went continually downhill from there. I did not enjoy the, uh, you know, the, the games that were played in the book. The second book in the series, um, shifted away from that. It kind of got to the main story and I just couldn't connect with it. I, I want to like this book series so more, so much more, but I can't like every book. Um, and yeah, certainly was not a huge fan of this one. Um, the next book on the series is Stormlight Chronicle. This is an S tier. I love, 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 love Stormlight Chronicle. Uh, it was my number one book for a while before I read Malazan. And, um, you know, I'm probably moving this actually down down here. Um, before I read the books ahead of it, Sanderson's so good. His plots and his twists and his world is amazing. Um you know, only one book in the series. The third one, um, Oath, Oathbringer. Um, I, I gave that one a four out of five. The rest of them were five out of fives. I can't say enough positive things about this. I love the magic. I love the plot. I love the characters. Um, I, I adore this book. And what he's doing with this. I, I, I suspect that this book is going to rise over time as more books come out. You know, this is a 10 book series. There's f- four out already. Um, and it's impressive to have a high score like that for me out of only four books. But I have full faith that the, the rest of the books in the series are going to be in equally high quality. Um, moving on, we're going to the Burning series by Evan Winter. Um, this is going to be a B tier for me. Um, I do like this this series a lot. I think I gave both these books five out of fives, or maybe a four and a half. Um, there's only two of them, um, so I'm, I'm knocking a little bit of the score off. The world feels a little small scale to me, but the writing is very well done. I love the African-inspired story here. It's something that I've never read in a fantasy series. Uh, the magic is very well done. I love the the main character. Um, I, I really like the way this story is progressing. This one's going to clearly shoot up the list for me. Is I think it's a four-book series. We're halfway done. Um, I have a lot of faith in Evan Winter. I think he's an amazing writer, um, and I can't wait to read more from the series. If you're looking for a series that is still actively being written and you're into that kind of thing, um, I, I very much recommend you pick up Rage of Dragons. Um, the last book on the series, A Wheel of Time. Uh, Wheel of Time is going to be A, um, probably bottom of the A list. 
I love a long fantasy series. Um, this series dragged on and on and on, and I was there for it. Um, I enjoy where Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson went with this. Um, some of the books were weaker than others. Um, the writing was not incredible. I felt like it fell for that George R. R. Martin problem where there's too much explanation of things. You know, I don't need to hear an explanation about every single thing in a room as a character walks into it. I don't need an explanation of every facet of the dress that a character is wearing. Um, you know, I found myself skimming a lot of the book when it came to these descriptions that didn't add to it. You know, you could have had hundreds of pages trimmed from each of these books and made them higher quality. But the story was great. It ended in an amazing spot. I I really liked the journey. Um, you know, it's an older book that I read recently, so it's, it doesn't have that Lord of the Rings problem for me where, you know, you appreciate it because of what it did for the genre. I can appreciate it for what it is now. Um, and, you know, it, it's not for everybody. I, I don't encourage people to read this if it's their first fantasy book or their second. Um, but if you're into fantasy, it, you're probably going to love this book series. Um, so that's my list. Um, I hope you'd enjoyed it. I'm, I'll probably do this on a yearly basis and we'll get to see where these rankings move. Um, I read a lot of books, probably like 100 to 150 fantasy books a year. So, you know, you'll have a, a good chunk more to add to this list by the end of the year um, and, and move some rankings around. So appreciate you. Um, hey.